Do you ever have days where it feels like your entire job centers around writing, reading, and answering email? Have you found yourself frustrated at 5 o'clock because you accomplished nothing other than maybe putting a small dent into the avalanche of email that chases you every day? If you're like a lot of the healthcare leaders I work with, you probably experience email as a necessary evil. It's hard at times to figure out where, when, or even how to get away from email, or how email might be limiting your effectiveness. That's why in this episode of Your Practice Ain't Perfect, I'm pointing out six times when you should call instead of email. Stick around. I'm guilty of it. It is so easy to do. I'm sure I've done it dozens of times without even realizing it. I have sent emails to people sitting just a few feet away from me. And then it happens. Moments after I hit send, a member of the team pops up, walks over to my desk and says, hey, I just got your email. Now I feel silly. Would it really have been that hard to get up and take the quick walk to chat in person? Do they think that I was avoiding them or that I didn't want to give them any more time than absolutely necessary? There are several kinds of situations where email probably isn't the best choice. Sure, you're accomplishing more of your to-do list by cranking out a steady stream of answers and follow-ups quickly, but at what cost? Email is a far less effective way to form relationships than actually, you know, talking to someone. The interactions we have with others are the primary way that we build trust. As a leader, trust is the critical component of what you do. Without it, you have very little chance of being successful. If you want to cultivate strong relationships with those around you, here are six times when a conversation, either in person or via a call, is a better choice than sending an email. Number one, to say thank you. Saying thank you is the simplest, most effective way to recognize someone. When an employee sees you taking time out of your busy day just for the purpose of expressing appreciation for their contributions, it becomes all the more meaningful. If you want to follow up with an email after the fact so they have something to add to their kudos folder, feel free. Number two, to check in with someone. Has someone on the team experienced a personal loss? Are they struggling on a project? Have they taken on more work in the absence of a coworker? Pick up the phone or take a walk and check in with them. Offer help and support in whatever way you can. It only takes a moment, but the impact will last and last. Number three, after conflict. It's human nature to avoid conflict. Conflict is uncomfortable. It creates self-doubt, and it triggers a wide array of emotions in everyone. When conflict occurs, the next interaction suddenly becomes nerve-wracking, or we allow anger, ego, or stubbornness to extend the conflict. Whether it started via email or in person, be the bigger person and pick up the phone. If it's in the aftermath of a highly charged situation or a minor contentious interaction, you may be able to thaw the situation quickly by saying, I'm committed to working through this together. How can we do that? Number four, when it's going to sting. If you need to share information or a decision that will provoke a strong reaction or disagreement, Share it in person whenever possible. And budget some time for a discussion instead of just making an announcement and walking away. Number five, to share good news. Did a project proposal get accepted? Is someone getting a raise or a title bump or a promotion? Did the requisition for new equipment get approved? Did a sought after candidate accept a position? Taking that moment to share good news via phone or in person should be the parts of your job you look forward to, and it demonstrates that you are invested in the little victories your team gets to experience from time to time. Lastly, to explore why. It's been said that email is great for facts, less so for opinions. Keep your emails focused on the who, what, when, and where. If the conversation turns to why, it might be a cue to stop typing and start talking. Each of us can come up with lots of reasons to justify using an email instead of a person-to-person -person conversation. I didn't want to interrupt them. I need the paper trail that the email creates. They might want to see that previous email conversation to recall everything that's been discussed. Yes, there are lots of reasons why email might be the way to go. 
But remember, it's not your only option. Email typically doesn't convey tone or intent well, and it prevents you from building the kinds of relationships with people that generate trust and respect. So put down that smartphone or close that laptop and go have a quick chat. You'll be glad you did. Hey, I'm not sure if you know this, but every time you share one of these videos on your LinkedIn page, a baby kitten gets rescued from an animal shelter, I think. That's what I've heard. So do that. Share these videos and leave a comment in the box below. And don't forget to visit JoeMall.com to subscribe. See you next time.